So to create this boardwalk, we have just a very few segments. I've got three planks for the walkway, and then there's one kind of stick for the sides that we'll hang the lights off of, and then there's an arrow that we can use temporarily to indicate how we can employ a macro that allows you to randomize between mirrored versions of the same object. So the idea is that these planks would be different uh, on both sides and that this post, for example, would um, be slightly differently modeled on the left, the right, the front and the back, so that or mirroring it would give you these different variations. Of course, for even more variety, you would add more segments to this mix. So here's how to create the boardwalk. First of all, we've got a spline in the scene to describe the path of the boardwalk, and then we'll create a Rail Clone Pro object in the scene, go to the Modify panel, and open the Style Editor. We're going to create a new linear array, and then add a spline to define the path. Pick the spline from the scene. Add a segment, and we'll pick these board models. So we'll add actually three segments, one for each board model. Then we're going to randomize between these boards, so we need to add a randomize operator and wire the three boards to the randomize operator and the operator to the default input. And there we can see if we turn on edge faces, the boards are appearing one after another. Let's just uh, add a material so that this becomes, becomes a little bit clearer. Okay. So first of all, the planks are touching each other, they're very close together, and we want to add a little bit of space between them, some gaps between them. So we'll do that by adding a transform operator and increasing the left padding value. And then we'll add some randomization to the translation, rotation and scale, just to make this whole thing look a little bit more rickety, a little bit less perfect. Add some chaos. So another thing you'll notice um, here is that there's a kind of very small wedge-shaped board and that's happening because there's a vertex on the spline below this point and so the board is actually being sliced. So the way to get around that is to go to the rules, the generator and change bevel mode to none. That means no boards will be sliced. Instead you'll get this kind of strange deformation on the plank and that's just simply because this segment is being deformed to follow the curvature of the spline below. So the way to get around this is to smooth out the curvature by adding more uh, interpolation steps to the spline. Fortunately, you don't need to go back to the spline itself to do this because Railclone has a built-in curve steps option. So just increase that will smooth out your deformation. And that's true for a lot of different styles. That's a useful setting. So now we've got the basic plank set up, we can start to add the posts on either side. So we'll add a new linear generator for that and use the same spline. We'll add a new segment and instead of picking the post for now, we'll just pick this arrow so that we can better illustrate the mirror randomization macro. We'll swap it after. So wire this to the default input and for now let's just disable the planks and change the mode to mesh so that we can see the arrow. So let's change it to the evenly input and just adjust the spacing of the evenly input to create a gap between them since the posts will be spaced out. You should also change the bevel mode to none so that the vertices don't cause a spacing issue between the evenly segments. Otherwise, when it hits a vertex, it will start uh, calculating the spacing again. So now we go to the macros rollout. And in the transform settings, you'll see there's a macro called mirror variations. So drag that in and wire it between the generator and the segment. At the moment, as you can see, the arrows are all facing in the same direction. So if we come into this here, this uh, the settings for this mirror variation and turn on X axis, you can see it's starting to randomize between these same segments flipped on all these different axes. So once we're happy with the variations, you can just swap it for the post, which is less easy to see in the viewport, but it's doing exactly the same thing. Let's put the planks back on. Now, of course, at the moment, these posts are running down the center of the boardwalk, but we need them on the sides. So in order to do this, you just adjust the Y offset value for the generator until the posts move out to the side. So that creates one side. And we want these posts at the start and the end as well. So in order to create the other side, we have a couple of options. It might be tempting to create another generator to do the 
posts on the other side. But in actual fact, RailClone has a feature that will automatically mirror these posts to the other side of the spline. And all you do is just turn it on. It uses the same offset setting, but mirrors to the other side. So that kind of solves that problem. So we need it there, but we've drawn a flat spline above this environment, which is easier to edit and handle, but uh, it doesn't help us to conform the boardwalk to this terrain. So if you've watched the power lines tutorial further up this page, you'll know that if you attach a surface node, to the surface input of these generators and pick the terrain from the scene, it conforms the spline down to the surface automatically and it's very easy and fast to update. Of course, what it also means now is that the posts are following the curvature of the surface too, so they're no longer staying upright. So in order to fix that, you pick the post segment, go to the deform tab and change the deform mode to stepped. Now all the posts will be upright. And finally, we don't want the boardwalk to be flat on the ground. There should be a space underneath. So in order to do that, you can pick the generator that's creating the planks and then go to the Z offset setting and just pull it up off the floor a little bit. If you want to make some of these settings easier to adjust from the modify panel, just right click on the generator or the node and export the parameters you wish to make editable. Then wire a numeric node to these exported parameters, make sure you change the type, and then you can control it directly from within the modify panel. You could, for example, do the same thing with the posts to control the distance between them. So you'd export the evenly distance and attach a new numeric node to that, change it to scene units, and then you can adjust the post spacing directly from the modify panel. So another issue here, as you'll see, is when you look at this boardwalk from the top view, you can see that the posts are offset from one another in a kind of zigzagging pattern. This is because when you offset a spline from one side to the other, effectively the length of it changes, and so the spacing calculations also will be calculated differently. If, however, you do need the posts to remain opposite one another, that's easy to achieve using a single checkbox. Just go in and select the generator that's creating the post, go to the Rules tab, down to the Evenly section, and turn on Sync Offset. And you'll then find that the posts will always remain opposite one another. And that's the boardwalk used in the lakeside scene complete.